You may have heard the advice that if you ever get lost at sea, you should avoid drinking seawater because this causes dehydration. This dehydration is caused by a process known as osmosis. Osmosis is the flow of solvent from a solution of lower solute concentration to one of higher solute concentration. Because seawater has high salt concentration, it will dehydrate the body by drawing water out of the parts that need it. In this figure, we see how osmosis can take place. We call this an osmosis cell. The two solutions are separated by a semi-permeable membrane. On one side, we have water with the red and white molecules and solute particles. On the right side, we only have water molecules with no solute. If we allow the two solutions to reach equilibrium, we'll see that the water from the right side will move through the semi-permeable membrane to the left side. In the end, we'll see that there's a higher amount of solution on the left side than there is on the right. The pressure due to this excess fluid on the more concentrated side is known as the osmotic pressure of the solution. The osmotic pressure can be calculated with the equation pi equals mrt, where pi represents the osmotic pressure in units of atmospheres, m is the concentration of the solute in molarity, r is the ideal gas constant with units of liters times atmosphere over Kelvin times mole. The T is the temperature in units of Kelvin. Alternatively, we could write an osmotic pressure equation which is very similar to the ideal gas equation. This would be pi times V equals nRT. In this case, we've taken out the molarity and moved the volume onto the left side with the osmotic pressure. In this case, the volume must be in units of liters and the lowercase n is the number of moles of solute present. In this problem, we're told that a solution is prepared by adding 6.21 milligrams of a protein to 10.0 milliliters of a solution at 25.0 degrees Celsius. If the solution with a protein has an osmotic pressure of 4.08 torr, what is the molar mass of the protein? Now in this problem we recognize that we're given an osmotic pressure so we should recognize that we will need to use one of the osmotic pressure equations. Since we're given a volume we'll probably use pi v equals nRT. Now we're asked to calculate molar mass. When you think about molar mass you should recognize that the units for molar mass are grams over moles. In this problem, we're given the mass of the protein, which is 6.21 milligrams, or when we convert it to grams, 6.21 times 10 to the negative third grams. We're given the osmotic pressure, but it's in units of torrs. We could convert torrs to atmosphere, since we remember that there's 760 torr in one atmosphere, and we find that the osmotic pressure is 5.37 times 10 to the negative third atmospheres. We could also convert the given temperature to Kelvin, so we get a temperature of 298.15 Kelvin, and the volume can be converted to liters, so we have a volume of 0 0.0100 liters. The gas constant is what we always know it to be, 0 0.08206 liters times atmosphere over Kelvin times mole. Now that we have pi, v, r, and t, we can solve by rearranging the equation to identify the number of moles n. When we plug in the values for pi, v, r, and t, we find that we have 2.19 times 10 to the negative 6 moles of protein present. Now that we have both the mass of the protein in grams and the moles of the protein, we can take the mass divided by the moles and get the molar mass of this protein. In this case, we get a value of 2.84 times 10 to the third grams per mole. This seems like a large molar mass, 
but proteins are very large molecules, so it's not really unusual to have a molar mass in the thousands of grams per mole for a protein. In all of our colligative property videos so far, we've only used solutes that have been molecular or covalent compounds. We know that molecular or covalent solutes stay together as molecules when they're dissolved in water. But what happens when the solutes are strong electrolytes? You should recall from previous courses that strong electrolytes completely dissociate in water. For example, if we have an ionic compound like cesium fluoride and we dissolve it in water, the compound would completely separate into its ions, cesium and fluoride. Once they're dissolved in water, those two ions would never ever get back together. So, now that we know the ionic compound has dissociated, how many solute particles are present in solution? If the cesium fluoride concentration was 2.4 molal, then the concentration of ions would be 2.4 times 2 because there are two ions, cesium ions and fluoride, present. So the concentration of particles dissolved would be 4.8 molal. This means that ionic compounds have greater colligative effects than covalent solutes. This is one of the reasons why we use salt on roads in winter rather than using something like sugar, which is a covalent solute. Since salt will separate into ions, it will have a greater colligative effect on the freezing point of the water. Never mind the fact that if we added sugar to the roads, it would just get all sticky. By now, you should be able to describe osmosis, including what moves and in what direction. You should also be able to use osmotic pressure to find the molar mass of a solute. Finally, you should be able to account for the presence of strong electrolytes in solution and determine how these strong electrolytes will impact their colligative properties.